Hi everybody, my name is Omar Frenkel. Welcome to uh, my session about Overt and Cloudinate. So, let's start. Okay, so first, who am I? Uh, as I said, I'm Omar Frenkel. Uh, first, I am a software engineer. This is what I do. I work at Red Hat for the last uh, five years, uh, a little more. And uh, what I do on my uh, daily basis is working on the Overt project. Uh, I'm a maintainer in the Overt engine uh, project. Uh, I would like to know, do you guys, anyone here knows about the Overt project? Yeah, you guys tried it, you guys played with it, yeah? Good, that's good. And what about Cloudinit? Anyone heard of it? Okay, great. Good, good start. So, what am I going to talk about? So, first I'm going to talk uh, a little about Cloudinit. I'm going to give introduction. What is Cloudinit? Uh, how does it work? And how you can use it? I will give also introduction to Overt. And I will go a little deeper to Overt uh, architecture. Uh, so it will be the base for uh, later on I will talk the uh, implementation uh, that we did for integrating cloud in it and over it. Uh, I will give an example of how you can how cloud in it is working with over it, how over it is using cloud in it uh, within and uh, then a little about what else is needed uh, to make this uh, integration more complete. So, cloud init. By definition, it handles early initialization of cloud instances. What it means is that cloud init is a service. It runs uh, when the VM virtual machines, when the virtual machines, cloud instance is actually a virtual machines. Uh, I also call it VM in a short. So, uh, when the VM boots, cloud, the cloud init service uh, runs. And what it does, it looks for some a uh, user data that is uh, provided uh, from the cloud provider. So for example, the EC2 uh, metadata uh, service, you can see the links here. If you have instance running uh, in uh, Amazon EC2, you can get this URL from within the instance and see some instance specific uh, metadata about uh, the instance, its instance ID and some more information. And the other one, the user data, is a way uh, to pass uh, user custom uh, information into uh, the instance. Uh, OpenStack has something similar. Uh, they call it a config drive, and basically uh, the same way to pass uh, user data, user custom data, into the VM uh, using a, a drive uh, attached to the VM. And it's important to say that uh, this data is instance specific. Every VM has a, a different user data passed to it on uh, the creation. So what you can do with it? What is this uh, early initialization? So basically anything you would like to do uh, when you uh, first uh, boot into your new created instance. If it's uh, setting the host name and the root password, uh, and other simple stuff like locale and time zone, and also some more advanced things like network configuration, a per net virtual interface uh, configuration, if it's DHCP or static IP, uh, better stuff like SSH keys that allows uh, connecting to the VM without sharing the root password. So uh, this is really good one, you can uh, just post the SSH key into the instance, it will have it set already and uh, users could log into it uh, using their SSH keys. And the most important thing is uh, running uh, user custom scripts, basically do whatever you want, install software, uh, do uh, other configuration, uh, create files, manage things uh, inside the VM uh, automatically. So this is the fun part, how to use it. Uh, this is very easy, actually. Uh, first, you have to have uh, on your uh, base image or template, depends on your cloud provider, uh, some Linux uh, 
distribution installed. Uh, many distributions uh, are supported by cloud in it. Uh, Fedora, Ubuntu, RHEL, CentOS, and, and so on are uh, supported already. And once you have this, you only have to install cloud in it. Uh, on it is, it is as simple as yum install cloud in it, and you have it. And once you have this uh, base image, this template, just create a VM of it, create a new instance of it, start it with the uh, specific user data, with the specific configuration uh, that you uh, want to run on the VM, and cloud in it will read this uh, configuration and will execute all the configuration according to the, um, to the specific uh, distribution. Okay, so how does it work inside just a little, uh, because I'm gonna uh, mention these things later on. So as I said, Cloud Init is a service. Uh, it starts when the VM boots. Uh, it first look uh, in his configuration, in the Cloud Config file, uh, what data sources uh, it should uh, read. Uh, there is a sample a list how it looks like the data source list. So uh, we have here as an example how over it is using it with no cloud and config drive. By default, it looks for uh, what I showed you before the EC2 metadata service, the, the user data. Assuming uh, some data source was found, uh, it reads all the configuration from it and execute it uh, according to the specific distribution. So there is uh, per distribution um, implementation of some commands because there are different, like setting host name in Ubuntu and Fedora is different because the file locations are different and stuff like that. So, so far uh, on Cloud Init. Any questions about Cloud Init? Great. Okay, so what is Overt from the beginning? By definition, it's a large-scale centralized management for server and desktop virtualization. What it means is that this is an open source platform for virtualization, for a data center virtualization. It provides a good alternative for vSphere and vCenter, if you know it. And over it has a focus on KVM, on KVM feature. It's uh, tailored for it and take advantages of uh, the KVM features, and it also focuses on uh, ease of use and deployment. So uh, if you uh, saw our booth uh, yesterday, you could see a really simple uh, all-in-one installation that was done in uh, just like five minutes. So environments you can deploy with over it, you can have the simple one host, one data center, uh, run a few VMs on this host. This is good for evaluating over it, if it's good for you, what are the features, how does it look like, how, is, how easy is it to use. It's also good for demos and private usages. And of course, Ovid can grow and have multi-data center, a multi-host, multi-cluster. Cluster is, uh, in Overt is a migration domain. So all VMs in a cluster can migrate, live migrate between uh, hosts. And basically Overt can manage uh, many data centers and uh, many clusters and many VMs, so on. So the Overt uh, present three um, ways of looking at it, three uh, ways to use it. First, you can see on the screen a screenshot of the user portal. This is uh, the basic portal that provides the basic uh, actions a uh, simple user can do with the system. Basically, it's just look what VMs I have. Uh, I can start and stop them, and I can connect to them. Some uh, information on the side about the VM, uh, what operation system, and memory, and stuff like that, and that's it. This is the simple user. All you need uh, is here. Uh, for advanced user, what we call power user, we have the self-provisioning portal. This portal, uh, in addition, provides uh, ways to create VM, provision new VMs, uh, create templates, and, and manage them. So it's like a simple administrator portal that allows uh, more 
a power for users. And of course, we have the administrator portal. Uh, this is the uh, full administration uh, portal. Everything administrator needs uh, in order to manage his data centers, manage a uh, host storage and network configuration, uh, creating virtual machines, and uh, users' permission, everything is here. And this is, I'm going to show you a little about it later on. Okay, so high level uh, architecture of over. First, we have the engine. The engine is a Java application, it runs on JBoss, and basically, uh, most of uh, decision making and business logic is done there. All uh, user interaction, uh, all user requests are uh, processed in the engine and uh, then executed. And all the metadata and configuration is saved in the engine. So the engine is using a database, of course. We're using Postgres in order to uh, save these configurations all via metadata. And we also use some kind of LDAP server for uh, user authentication. So um, we can uh, connect with other uh, LDAP servers. On the other hand, we have a REST API for uh, integration with other components for scripting and stuff like that. And we have, of course, uh, the web clients that I just showed you, the three web clients and uh, Python, and today also Java, SDK, and CLI for uh, extensions, for user scripts, and so on. So the engine uh, works with the hosts. So we have a host. On the host, we have the host agent. We call it VDSM. The VDSM uh, is responsible for uh, all host level configuration. If it's connection to storage, if it's network configuration, and uh, the VDSM is using Livirt uh, to manipulate VM. Starting and stopping VMs, uh, all VM commands uh, are done with Livirt. And we also use a MUM project uh, for scheduling, uh, if it's a ballooning and CPU shares and stuff like that. VM uh, images, the disks of the VMs, are saved on local storage. If it's a one host uh, setup, and for multiple hosts, we sorry, we use shared storage. So shared storage can be a NFS, POSIX, file-based, or it can be a block block-based if it's a FCI SCSI, and also of course GlusterFS. And finally, and most important, uh, the VMs running on the host. Uh, we also have a guest agent. It, it is written in Python, and it, it is responsible for uh, sending information from within the guest uh, outside, like uh, applications installed and the IP and stuff like that, and also responsible for some actions like single sign-on. Overt is also using Spice and Spice Client uh, to connect uh, to the guest. And actually there is a session today at 2, if you're interested uh, more about that, in the Overt workshop. So, be what we had before Cloud Init, back to Cloud Init, now that we know about, yeah. Yeah, do you mind going to the mic or I will repeat? Great. So the question is, um, you were showing a database and uh, with uh, the Ovid engine. Uh, what, where the, the, I mean, speaking in a high level, where does all this uh, reside? I mean, what happens if your Ovid uh, machine falls or whatever it's sending? Is there a way to give it high availability? Availability? Yeah. So as I said, the Ovid is a JBoss, uh, is a Java application over JBoss. So there are a HA. Um, solutions uh, f for JBoss, and uh, in case it fails, it's, it's important to remember that the hosts that actually runs the VMs are still operative. So VMs are running and users can uh, still connect. The only downtime is uh, when a user tries to create new VM or start new VMs, so basically user requests are blocked while the engine is down. And, and your database is also highly, highly available? 
the database is a Postgres database. There are also solutions for highly available, but not inside uh, the engine, outside of the engine. Yeah. 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 Okay. So there is the hosted engine, but I will not uh, go into that. There, what it means is that the engine runs on a VM, on a highly available VMs, and it's managed by uh, another uh, HA solution. So basically, it gives you high availability for g the engine as well. Okay. But Exactly. Okay, so back to Cloud Init. Um, what we had before Cloud Init. So over today, or before today, had uh, integration only with Windows Sysprep. And for anyone who doesn't know Windows Sysprep, is basically a way uh, to configure Windows VMs uh, on boot. It allows to set the Windows key, it allows to set uh, the Active Directory domain, and setting time zone, basically, uh, this is it. We had integration uh, for this uh, since the beginning. Uh, probably, as you can see, it's pretty simple. The time zone, domain, uh, only for Windows VMs. And this happens uh, during the uh, boot of a Windows VM. And this is what we had so far. Now we're, we're missing something similar for Linux. This is where Cloud Init comes in. So let's have an example of how to use a uh, cloud in it with Overt. So first, what we need to have is template. In Overt, we have templates uh, that has a Linux installed in it, and we need to install cloud in it uh, also, uh, in addition to the, to the operation system. Of course, you can also install any other software like the Overt guest agent. Uh, another thing that is uh, Optional step is sealing the VM before creating the template. Uh, basically, you can do uh, some uh, uh, unconfigure uh, command that basically set uh, some parameter for the operation system to show the first, uh, first setup on the next boot. Um, and this is not so related, but this is nice to know that you can do it. And then you create a template from this VM. So now we have a template with Fedora <coughs> and a cloud in it. Now we need to create a VM from this template. So how does it work in Overt? That mean ask from the engine, again, to create the, a VM uh, from this template. <coughs> Sorry. The engine goes to the database and bring all the template information and uh, save a new VM uh, uh, metadata, all the configuration to the database. And in addition, we need to go to VDSM and ask for it to create uh, the disks for the VM and save them on the relevant storage domain. Uh, this is how uh, the uh, cloud in it, it looks okay? Yeah. This is how cloud init configuration screen uh, looks today. Uh, when running the VM. So now that we have the VM, we, it, we know it's, uh, it has Fedora inside, we know it has cloud in it, and now we need to use it. So this is how we uh, pass all the user data that I talked before uh, into the VM. So you can see everything I talked about, uh, setting host name, setting network, uh, if it's uh, interface specific or no, uh, DHCP, uh, DNS and uh, the, the SSH keys that I mentioned to allow uh, connecting to the VM without password, time zone, and uh, root password, and below uh, is hidden uh, the uh, setting of files into the VM. So I will show it uh, later on. Okay, so how does this work? 
the admin asks to run the VM and he fills out all the information that he likes in the screen. The engine first creates this cloud init config drive. So we have to create uh, the drive in a way that cloud init knows to read and looks for. Then we have the scheduling mechanism that we look for the best host according to the scheduling policy to start this VM on. And once we have it, we ask for VDSM, please create this VM for us. In its turn, it, it is used as a libvirt, creating this libvirt XML. And we have QMO process with our VM, hopefully with the cloud in it running inside. So what do we do to, for this implementation to work? Um, on the over side, we used an existing feature that is called VM payload. VM payload basically allows user uh, to inject files into the VM and use it as a CD-ROM or a floppy. So you can see here an, an example uh, of usage in REST API. Uh, basically, you can see the payload type is CD-ROM. This is the file name. Uh, only one file was supported. Some content, and that's it. When you run the VM, this file will wait in the CD-ROM for you. Other stuff that we had to do uh, is to create uh, the specific uh, CD-ROM drive. It's called, the name has to be config-2, and organize all the information uh, inside the CD-ROM in a way cloud in it will know to read. Uh, there are some, st some stuff that OVIR does uh, in addition to actually configure cloud in it to work as we expect. So first, cloud in it has something that we call instance ID. Uh, basically, every configuration has an ID in order uh, for cloud in it to know that it already ran. Okay, so if you run the VM on the next time, you don't want all the configuration to run again. But if the user wants specifically to run cloud in it again, so we set a new uh, ID for the run. Uh, as I said, we are setting the data source configuration, the data source list to, has, uh, to have no cloud and config uh, drive. Uh, so cloud init will not look for the metadata service because we don't have it in Ovirt. It's only for EC2. And uh, the most important, uh, inside the drive we have uh, two parts. One is the uh, metadata JSON file. It contains all user configuration that is supported by cloud init out of the box. Um, host name, network uh, configuration keys, everything is set in this uh, JSON file in a nice formatted uh, XML. And the other part is all the custom uh, user data. So here we put our own configuration for cloud init uh, we are setting files in this uh, in this part, and in the future also uh, custom scripts and stuff like that will be here. So, uh, in cloud init, we just needed to use the the config drive data source, and we just to had to make sure that uh, we are sending the right volume ID, the config dash two. Uh, we didn't have to do much more uh, in cloud in it. Uh, we contributed only a few patches uh, that were mainly some fixes uh, to work right with Fedora and Drell. Uh, if I remember correctly, it was uh, some system D related issues. And uh, looking for the config drive device in SR0 and SR1, because this is how it works in Fedora. In VDSM, all we had to do, uh, VDSM is the host agent, all we had to do uh, is to extend uh, the VM payload uh, that I talked about before. So we had to support multiple files first because we wanted to allow the user send more files into the VM. And also uh, we had to support uh, renaming uh, the drive to be the config-2. In the engine, we had to do a little more work. So first is the same extensions uh, to the VM payload uh, feature. But in addition, we had to first create uh, the UI for this. Uh, so the user could actually fill in all the information. And also, uh, we have REST API for passing this information. And the most important stuff 
is the actual login, uh, actual logic for building all this, uh, all this nice screen into the, f the right formatted way. So, what are we missing? Um, first, we would like to have all the Cloudinate user data persisted into our database. Um, this is today missing and, sorry, we, we need it for better automation. What does it mean? It means that we uh, will save uh, the user data uh, with the template and basically allow when you create VMs from this template a better automation because if for example you set the SSH keys and you set the host name to be the VM name it will be uh, done automatically. Um, another thing that we are missing is not everything that is supported today in Cloudinate is supported in Overt. Um, the most important thing is the custom user scripts, basically allowing the user to uh, write whatever he wants and to, to run when the VM boots, so we don't have it yet. Uh, a nice feature that we thought about that, hey, we could use Cloudini to do that, was actually allowing the user to check if he likes uh, the over guest agent installed, so we could use Cloudini uh, to install it as a, as a custom uh, user action. Um, one thing that is a, a long shot, uh, in case that Cloudinit would uh, be supported uh, in a right way on Windows, we might be able to replace Windows SysPrep or maybe enhance Windows SysPrep uh, with Cloudinit. Um, so I'm not sure about this one, it's uh, thinking but maybe uh, maybe we could do that as well. And um, another thing, if you remember at the beginning, I told you that Overt is a platform for data center virtualization. But actually, you could use Overt also as a cloud provider, as a cloud infrastructure. And uh, we have on our roadmap uh, some features like instance type that will allow better uh, cloud flows uh, for example, set in uh, hardware templates and uh, flavors, and Cloudinit could uh, fit in to uh, make these flows uh, even better. So, questions? I have a demo. I don't know how much time do I have. Questions? Okay, so uh, I have a quick demo, uh, if you like. So basically what, does it look okay? Because I changed the resolution. Basically what I'm gonna show you is creating a VM from a, a template that I already made and uh, setting <coughs> some uh, cloud init information and, and run it and you can see it working. So what I'm doing here, Excuse me, it's a record. I wanted to do a live demo, but my server is in Tel Aviv, and it doesn't work well, so this is better. <coughs> uh, what I'm gonna do here first, I'm gonna create a new VM. So I'm selecting my cluster and selecting my predefined template. You can see it's a Fedora 19 with a Cloudini template that I, uh, that I made before. Uh, now what I'm doing is uh, selecting the optimization. We have uh, two types of optimization, uh, one for server and one for desktop. Uh, there are uh, some small uh, differences. Whoops, what did it do? Oh. There are some small uh, differences. Uh, the main thing is that uh, desktop does a thin provisioning and server does um, cloning, so desktop is of course more faster. Now all I have to do is just type in some name, no hands, and, and go for it. So let's see that happens. Great. Uh, it takes really quick as you can see because this is a desktop, this is thin provisioning, uh, no much 
uh, work need to be done. And what I'm going to do now is start the VM. So I'm going to the uh, initial run uh, tab, and I will click that I do want cloud in it. I set here only a host name uh, to be the default as the VM name. Uh, for simplicity, this is uh, usually what user wants. And I am going to attach a file uh, to the VM. This is the part that you couldn't see in the screenshot before. So I set here some file. This is no. This is not a custom strip. This is part of uh, of cloud in it. Okay. So clicking OK actually starts the VM and the process that I showed you before, creating the config drive, sending it to VDSM, QM process started, and uh, the VM is run. This is the first time that I ran this VM. And now we will connect to it with using Spice. So you could see the Spice client opens. And uh, Fedora is starting. I think you could also see here this is the first boot. It says all the red stuff on the first boot. Yeah. OK, so this is uh, Fedora coming up. It will take only a second, or two, or three. What's going on? And now I'm inside the VM just checking that those two configurations that I did actually happened. So if you remember, I said the host name and I put some file under temp. So you can already see the host name is uh, whatever we set there. And the file is here. And the content as we entered in the user portal is here, in the administrator portal is here. So this is a quick, not so live demo, and uh, that's it. If you have any questions, thank you.